Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to examine in the rule of 72, why does the number 72 come up? Why not 75 or 80? Why this number? The short answer, I suppose, is that it works with the mathematics in a couple of ways. It works so that you have a somewhat easy estimation tool. A lot of numbers go into 72. So it's likely that when you divide it, you can divide it directly with a lot of options, or you can estimate your interest rate to a factor of 72 to get an approximation. The other, the other part of it is that um, in, our, in our work, the natural log of 2, which in correlates to our doubling, the value of the natural log of 2 is about 69.3 which is really close to 72. And we could use 69.3 or other numbers depending on how we want to estimate, but that's not really useful if you're trying to do it in your head, right? 72 is more useful for that reason. And let me just show you a little bit of how this works. Now, mathematically, mathematically, when we're looking at doubling in general, the idea is you have some amount that you're investing and you multiply it as growing by one plus some kind of interest rate depending on how it compounds that's over time. And then you want to double your investment, right? So if this is how much you put in at first, you're now moving on to twice that. That's the definition of doubling. Whatever P is, $100, $1,000, you're now doubling it. And what we want to do in all these cases is solve for time. Because we're trying to find how much time it takes for this doubling to happen. So we're going to divide, divide both sides then by P, the amount that you invested, right? Balancing equations here, and we could divide both sides by this variable. We're not investing zero. That wouldn't make sense, so we don't have to worry about dividing by zero. These cancel out, these cancel out, and there we have our two. So we have one plus the interest rate to the power of t, that's the amount of years, equals two. Okay, how do we solve for t? Well, we use logarithms. And I'm gonna use the natural logarithm of both sides. That has to cor that corresponds to powers of e, and that's useful for continuous growth. But regardless, if, even if you don't know what that is, the idea is we can take the log of both sides, which is like which is like another operation. Let's say you're squaring both sides, for example, or raising it to a power. We just accept that we can use that mathematically for a moment, just so you can see how this works. So we're still balancing the equation. Now another property of logs: this t can be brought in front here. This is a really important property of logarithms, and it corresponds to laws of exponents. So we get time times the natural log of 1 plus r equals the natural log of 2. Got this all set up now. We want to solve for time. So even if we're, I, you know, it might be shaky with natural log, but time times this stuff equals natural log of 2. So how do we get time by itself? We would divide the natural log of 2 by this piece right here the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 1 plus r. Now, this is where the interesting, I think, pieces come together. This right here, the natural log of 2, is really close to 69.3. So the natural log of 2 is about 69.3. So right away we can see, okay, well, we use 72 because it's close to 69.3. And that's going to kind of behave a little bit like the natural log of 2. The other piece down here is that when we're dividing by the natural log of 1 plus r, this stays pretty close to 1 for the interest rates that we're looking at. And we can test that out in a spreadsheet here. Let's do that. Let's have our interest rate. I'll type this out. Interest rate. And we want percents here, so I'm going to click the heading, go to Format, Number, Percent. These are our, our values, our interest rates. So I'm going to just go to 100 real quick. So 101. All right, so here we want to look at the value of the natural log of 1 plus the interest rate. So equals LN 1 plus this value here. Okay, so you can see, all right, so this, this is the natural log of 1. It's a different number, right? But we're saying it's close to the r value, so I'm going to multiply this by 100. 
think this will work. Let's see. Oh, wait, you know what? This might be, no, this would be okay. Times 100. You see it's really close. So we'll look at the difference here. Difference between these two things. I'll type absolute value of this minus this over here. I'm going to X that out. And here, actually, you know, I'm trying to multiply by 100 because this is as a percent. I'm, just, I'm getting messed up right here. This is 1%, which is 0 0.01. And this right here, let me just delete the times 100 as a mistake. You can see that this is 0 0.0099, which is really close to 0 0.01 or 1%. It's this far apart. That is really close. So let's just do this. Let's stretch this out a little bit here. Let's just apply these down the line so you can see. Now, the difference starts to get larger, but it's still very, very small. As I go down here, it's 0.1. Okay, so it's getting further. Let's go down to here towards. So the biggest difference is a third away, 0.3. And that's for a 100% interest rate, which you're not really going to be using for the Rule 72. You're going to probably be staying, let's say, I don't know, 50% or below. But you can see that those differences, these numbers here and these numbers here, uh, these numbers and these numbers, 25%, this is 0.22, which is 22%, they're really close to each other. And these, this is the column measuring how far apart they are. So what you can say is that this right here is really, really close. It's about equal to whatever the rate is, the interest rate. So let's just recap. We're saying that this is how you solve it precisely. And then we're pointing out that the numerator is really close to 72, and this is really close to the interest rate. And that is why we use the rule of 72. Think about this. In the rule of 72, we say the time it takes for your money to double is not the natural log of 2 over natural log of 1 plus r. It's about 72 divided by about the interest rate. And that's our formula right there. So that's what's happening, and I hope you like that. Thanks.